All right, let's see if third time's the charm. Hey guys, Ben here from Second Dynasty. It is Good Friday here in good old sunny Sweden. Uh, gearing up for a long weekend uh, off. I'm not really supposed to be working today, but I thought I'd run a regular Friday stream, you know. This year it'd be nice to see that we had 52 episodes across the year. So I'm going to try and shoot for that. I think we ended up with only 35 last year. And you get an egg, and you get an egg. Hoppy Easter. Someone is in the spirit. Um, I am actually feeling quite under the weather today, so tonight, today might be a short one. Uh, of course, everyone else is at home because it is a public holiday. Uh, but I did want to run an episode today anyway uh, because I think we've made some significant progress uh, and there's quite a bit of news. So, firstly, hi to everyone in the chat today. Stosh I am, Tamson, Anders, Solo Spirit, Shogal, Brian Haven. Those are the ones I can see at the moment. I hope you're all having a wonderful Friday, or close enough. Uh, here on the screen, we can see our newest product we've been working on, the Erebus Shuttle is what I'm thinking of calling it, although I'm not sure if maybe Nostromo should be called Erebus instead and have the shuttle be called something else. Um, just a working title and whatnot. Um, so, technically, um, the good news is, remember when I said, oh, I guess if you're new you might not, but I've said numerous times that the travel stuff that we make does take significantly longer because we don't have full creative control so I've been working on this shuttle for four weeks now I think at least going by the the streams um, and here is the current result so <coughs> The exterior is done, sorry. I just need to add the airlock and whatnot. Loving the detail that's coming out. And uh, the top just slots off. You can see the interior. It's a little underfloor cargo space. I have these slots in the walls for putting in partitions. And yeah. Progress has been made. Believe it or not, I'm a little bit low energy today, but I'm really stoked with how this all came out and how well it sits together. Um, it's an attractive ship, if you ask me. And um, I feel it really does capture that look of, you know, Ron Cobb's work that I was really trying to emulate. So let's see, hopefully... My camera has switched back now to the scene. So, let's see, it looks like I'm just going to refresh YouTube Studio there because it looked like it was lagging quite a bit. Uh, let's see, yeah, alright. So, there we go. So, hopefully you guys like the look of it. Um, it's very light. John taught me how to use lightning as a mode. And I don't know how much it weighs now, but before I got the back end on it, it was about 500 grams. And normally this thing would have been dense, even with 8% infill. So I'm impressed how much lighter it is actually. The only thing is the open lock clips maybe don't clip together as snugly as they used to. It is a little bit looser because there's not very much support in there to sort of like hold the clip joints in place. Uh, but it's a, a work in process. A work in progress. Sorry. Um, I don't know if I ate something funny yesterday or something like that. <laughs> I'm um, tripping over words and a little lethargic. In any case, I just wanted to show off how far we've come and also talk about a few big things. We uh, did an Easter update for our Traveller Smallcraft campaign. 
um, just showing off the additional modules that we've done um, for these passenger cabin variants for each of the small craft um, we decided to turn them into like separate products or things so that people in the future can easily upgrade it you know if someone comes along that didn't get in on the Kickstarter um, they might have the opportunity to you know collect upgrades suitable for their ship but I really like the uh, the hard points that we released lots of varieties there um, some great community ideas um, that came out of it uh, I know you're not supposed to have two turrets on a small craft uh, it's just to illustrate the, the variants of parts that are available I think uh, and of course you can always put like a like a, an airlock or something up there instead of an actual turret so yeah um, quite an update and then the big news uh, the part that we are have been official with is in any case our, our license is under Mongoose Publishing now and uh, we are looking to create something later in the year that ties in to their um, Fifth Frontier War campaign so <clears throat> that's currently the plan although in the meantime what we are focusing on is Starship 6 Soul Survivor so Starship 6 will be in two parts Soul Survivor is the shuttle I just showed off um, and then later in the year the larger vessel uh, which I have just made a little silhouette of there you can kind of just vaguely see out the arrow shape of uh, the shuttle there um, so yeah in the description for this video is a link to the Kickstarter uh, sign up page so get in there uh, click notify me on launch and you'll get notified when we go live uh, I think technically I wanted to time it for Alien Day uh, for obvious reasons that is the 26th of April uh, which is perfect we're gonna be ready for then uh, that's not a problem the main issue is it's on a Friday for us it's better to launch earlier in the week so um, what I'm thinking is five o'clock on Friday for us is at least already the 26th in my homeland of Australia so um, why not get it started then and call it Alien Day anyway because it'll be Alien Day down under so anyway it's mostly a gimmick but that's the plan um, probably run a three month campaign and what we'll be focusing on now too because Alban should be finished with the uh, mecha tank for May at the end of next week uh, which will bring some new turrets and a new variant on his robot tank um, that is manned instead uh, looking really cool it's got six legs um, so yeah we've gotten all the stuff ready for April tribes it's ready to go already um, so that should just tick over um, and then we actually did make a release too to uh, our um, deck plans backers for the Beowulf campaign so Lisa Lott's been working hard making a bunch of variants in the vein of what we talked about when we originally launched that campaign uh, so we are very close to having a minimal viable product on I think three of the four ships so she's still working on a Type S but there is updates for all of the other ships actually no I think all of them have got them up for the time being so we may add uh, an A1 poster version of the Type S um, because it, it doesn't fit properly into an A2. It's it, Technically the deck plan does, but you don't see the whole ship, so we might just do a variant of that so it feels a little bit, um, a little bit larger uh, and you can see everything. Anyway, that's most of the boring stuff done. Although I wouldn't say it's all boring. Um, at the moment what have I got left to work on on this shuttle if the outside is done so I've done a considerable amount of work in the cockpit I might turn off the lighting because this is um, you can see it lagging just a little bit uh, so there it might also be that do I have any other geometry no not really um, so yeah I have changed all of the tiles back to this sort of thicker pattern um, 
this is print optimized. We made sure it prints very nicely on the um, on our bamboo, even at you know the the full pelt speed. Um, so I'm excited for that. Um, lots of umming today. Like I'm impressed with how the details come out on the interior here. Like all of this prints nicely. You get texture on the piping. Um, we did it at 0.16 on the bamboo and maybe one or two parts were on the Prusa Mark IV, uh, sorry, yeah, i3 Mark IV because we only really just have gotten that getting back to an acceptable like, level in the last couple of days. Thanks to John. Hey John! YouTube would not let me load chat. I have been here. I have been here. I love you. Wow. It's nice to be loved. So, we've actually taken some of the tech that we put into our traveler ships for these partitions. So, rather than building out everything, um, these all slot in here and in here, I think. Um, I'll need to make some adjustments. And the um, you can see the edge there. These are intended to be inserts, just to create a little bit of an engineering sort of bait. Technically, if I'm honest, this wall should probably be more slanted than it is. There is room for, like, I guess only the nozzles on the end here, right? You can have piping going in different directions, but it's not optimal. Basically, I made an internal compromise, making it feel a little bit like an 80s toy in a way, where they don't really care so much about, you know, where the engines go or not. It's just a a kid's game approach, sort of, um, if that makes any sense. So I chose playability over, you know, uh, 100% this is how it would work. I mean, we've, we've got room left for our imagination for all this machinery to go above and below and around and whatnot. So, foremost I've thought about playability um, just so that you could conceivably have this on a table and you know, you've got in some places six squares of usability, you can you know, get a miniature in the airlock, you can get miniatures in the locker rooms. Um, I'll probably put a fresher in one corner or something like that. Um, and of course, we need a suit locker. <laughs> uh, that would be, I'd say, necessary. But I really love the way that these are all coming out. Uh, and yeah, the last thing I started working on yesterday uh, were these partitions. I don't, I took these straight out of Odyssey just because they have the parts I wanted. Um, but I don't, th I think this is too busy for the design. Um, I think we would want to carry a different pattern than the one we have here. Um, so probably looking just for something very simple and uh, integrating the semiotic. So I've placed them out here, for example. This is your maintenance one, this is your power one. Um, so it kind of makes sense. Here you've got life support and you've got suit lockers. So we've got our life support controls there. Need to change the semiotic just a little bit. Uh, you're not seeing the white in the background there just because they're not properly integrated. And then I'd like to do, you know, maybe a bit more detailing on this part or, um, you know, just to create some variance. And then there's no seats in here. I was thinking of having inserts with, um, with more like the sort of, I guess, H frame that, um, that the ones in the film have. Like not going all the way in that direction. And I still want to make this practical so that you could conceivably get to this machinery, so I'll probably end up like shaving off this line. Not entirely sure yet. But that's where I'm at development wise, creating the details. So next week I'll be focusing on how we're going to attach this section to the floor, getting the crow sleep tubes printable, um, attaching the control panels. These look fairly complete at the moment, but they're actually. 
um, in the process of you know being made whole enough to actually print but in the most recent version there is some architecture here as you can see for clipping in the control section uh, again we're following our design philosophy of trying to um, make everything print support free so um, and even just the cleanness of supports uh, John was kind enough to walk me through the sort of like sizes that we would need to make this pattern turn up really nice on the printer uh, rather than causing issues with bridging and whatnot um, so he's been a real champ this uh, last week getting both our printers printing better actually um, just through his increasing body of knowledge about 3D printing that will happen when you print hundreds of ships <laughs> um, so yeah I probably you constantly praise others look at the beautiful work you have done so oh thank you John I appreciate that um, yeah the point is we're getting quite close um, I also spoke to my mate Brian who painted um, who painted the sleep near and a very awesome uh, Pathfinder amongst other things he painted the Type S uh, very busy man but he's keen as to print the uh, sorry paint these shuttles up and eventually the no stromo larger ship when we do build it um, so yeah that'll be exciting to see maybe we get it done on time maybe we don't we might need a, a second less pretty version we have at home here uh, to film some of the things we have in mind uh, but it all depends how it comes together and obviously there's a lot of runway between now and there um, to work with um, we don't know the final formats but yeah since I am going to probably finish this up in the next week I would say so we have a complete prototype um, for now I'm not going to put a landing gear in it rests comfortably on this base so it looks good on your tabletop anyway but um, we might do it as an, uh, a stretch goal or something it wouldn't be too hard probably to you know stick some panels in here and maybe these even look like they could be you know pads so uh, that is something that we'd definitely consider for a stretch goal Will we be adding lighting options? Um, we've done a lot of that in the past for simplicity's sake. No, I tell you what. What what I'll do is, um, I think it will be a case of we could set that as a pretty high stretch goal. So if we get to that point, maybe I can set it up for just using the lighting configurations that we've used. Um, I do intend for there to be different engine nozzles, but at the moment, I mean, this is just a flat mount plate, um, but we do have some room to play with, for sure. Um, and you could easily stick, you know, a battery or something in here uh, with a bit of planning. Um, but no, I hadn't thought to get into lighting for a while. Most of the supplies that we have have been used up. I need to order some new ones, but if I don't have the stuff lying around, um, I do kind of like to work to the design philosophy of you should be able to pretty much, you know, do the things we've done. Um, which is also why, okay, I, I like to find, I'll take great paint talent when, um, when it's available absolutely but like I think the more important thing is just to show you know there are people that can print parts better than I can but you know we create a reasonable level of what you can expect and I think the people that really have fine-tuned their printers can be like oh I can do better than that and that's a great challenge for us um, and people that don't feel they have those skills can feel like oh wow this is what I can achieve and you know don't see the differences how big are the engine nozzle openings? I have not measured. Um, I mean, technically, you could definitely get a globe through there if it um, if it was extended. That wouldn't be an issue. Um, I'd say they're quite large. 
Uh, I mean, I usually use five millimeter ones. I can measure this, uh, I think. Let's see. These are good questions. Uh, so if we go to snap and we go create and we want a measure tool, distance tool. Oh. I'm going to try and snap this to two known points there, and it says 13.8 mil. So yeah, plenty, plenty of leeway there. There's probably a larger diameter light than that, um, but I mean, I would, I would probably actually narrow the channel if I was designing uh, a light kit for it, so it was more like fit to that particular size that I've worked with before. But again, I don't have a lot of like spare parts lying around. I don't really know what I'm doing. Like I get a basic circuit, but when it comes to, you know, how much um, should be in there. Um, well, the, the Beowulf at least, Clive was actually designed for lighting kits in particular. And we have one in ours. Um, just it was managed by a third party and I don't think uh, uh, we, we just don't have access to the same knowledge pool anymore. Um, so, well, not knowledge pool. That's not true. I just mean like I haven't put effort into it, and uh, I knew it wasn't um, going to be economically viable to support it for the uh, the dude that was making it either. So, um, yeah. Anyway. So five mil will definitely fit <laughs> more than enough room in there. Um, and then, yeah, I guess we could easily bore out something here or even store the batteries in one of these rooms, maybe. Um, yeah, but it would, it would require a little bit of redesign on my part, um, especially for the lower engines. Um, so I haven't really considered it, and most of the shots in Alien and whatnot with the Narcissus and whatnot, you don't actually see it firing its main engines until it kills uh, the Alien. Well, kills. Yeah, we'll see about that, won't we? So it's still it. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. I don't know what to tell you, mate. Um, it sounded like people were being prodded in the lighting section that the deliveries were being handed handled for a different guy um, it's not great I'm sorry um, they're just adjacent to us so we don't really properly license it's more just a courtesy thing like uh, this guy does lighting this lighting works in our ship that's about it you know um, so yeah, sorry to hear that, mate. Anyway, um, today I won't be doing too much more, because like I said, I'm really not feeling well today. Uh, but the general layout of the cockpit I'm happy with. Um, I managed to get this computer system to print out well. I ended up having to close things off uh, just to prevent some warping. These pipes came out amazingly well. Um, I've reprinted that part many times just because of the, the, the tiles in it and whatnot and trying to refine the printing technique. Um, but I'm very happy with how quickly this development is going. <laughs> Let's move to happy thoughts like ponies, fields of wild ponies roaming free across the plains. I didn't know that you were a brony, John. So yeah, um, sorry for the low energy today, um, but I do hope that um, you guys are a little bit excited by the progress. It's nice to actually have a page up. We'll be putting more information up next week on several projects, and our future with Mongo should be announced fairly soon. Um, I mean, the future project under the Traveler license, including Mongoose. I should say. So, to be clear, we don't have a partnership with them. Uh, it's more a case of 
they're our middleman, if you will, for all licensing at the moment for Traveller. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun uh, being able to do some of those really cool uh, miniature designs. Uh, do have do ponies have lighting kits? They could have. They could have. So yeah, I'm going to close up the top here. And guys, I'm just so low energy today. I, I think I'm gonna round things off. Um, it is Easter this weekend, as mentioned. So I hope uh, if you celebrate it, or at least live in a country where you get some days off, I hope you enjoy the time off. And uh, we should be back next week, uh, pretty much with, I'd say, a feature complete shuttle. Uh, so I'm excited to show that off. I'm very excited that we got some real progress made with our deck plans. And uh, I think John had finished six of the seven instead ships uh, was the goal for this week. So um, next week we should have that product as well, which means we'll be at full delivery for the Traveller Small Craft campaign. Aside from obviously the physical prints that was always meant to go a bit longer. Uh, and yeah, we will be offering physical prints of this shuttle too through the same uh, progress. So, uh, yeah, we should be ready Wednesday. Oh, oh, with the miniatures, yeah. So, yeah, um, guys, see you next week. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. And, uh, yeah, just wait until next week to see what I'll be able to come up with.